Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at 6.1 exponential functions and some of the graphs as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So functions, when finding function values, replace the x with the value given. So f of x equals x plus 5. They'll say something like find f of 3. That just means replace x with 3 and then solve the equation, all right? So in this case, uh, f of 3 would be 3 plus 5. And so f of 3 would be 8. And we include that with the answer as well, the f of 3 stuff, which we will see in the examples. For the function, f of x equals 2 to the power of x. So we already got the exponent stuff going for us. And we should not put that in the calculator anyways. Calculate the following function values. So f of 3 would be the same as... Um, 2 to the power of 3, right? Because we replace the x with 3. And so typing that in the calculator, or just do 2 times 2 times 2, we get 8. So overall, we can just write the answer as f of 3 equals 8. Now, I think we've talked about this before. The good thing about this is we see the x value and the y value, So which means if we wanted to graph this as a point, it would have the ordered pair 3, 8 from the 3 and 8. So f of 4 then would be 2 to the power of 4. So again typing that into the calculator we get 16. So f of 4 equals 16. For the function f of x equals 3 to the power of negative x Calculate the following function values, f of 1 and f of 2. All right. Uh, now, some of you guys will hopefully remember, if we have a negative exponent, we would reciprocate that. So you could either do it as it is and just type it into the calculator, which would be fine. So f of 1 would be 3 to the power of negative, but x is 1. And if we type that into the calculator, um, I'm kind of assuming they don't want the decimal value, because this one repeats, so we would write it as an actual fraction, right? Where we flip the fraction, we reciprocated it to make it 1 over 3 to the power of 1, or just 1 over 3. So if we looked at it, uh, the original function, and saw that we had that negative exponent, we could change it, and it would have the same value as f of x equals 1 over 3 to the power of x, Right, because I, I reciprocated that uh, 3 to the power of negative x over 1. And once it crosses the line, then we change the sign of the exponent. So this one, if we looked at it that way, f of 2 would be uh, 1 over 3 to the power of 2, which is 1 ninth. This one's very different. And we've got to be careful with how we put this in the calculator, all right? For certain types. <clears throat> for the following, for the function f of x equals 4 to the power of 2x, and then minus 3, calculate the following function values. Now, we've got to be careful. If we type this into the calculator wrong, it's going to interpret this as 4 to the power of 2, x minus 3, like this. So it's just the 4 that's squared on this one. Um, in some cases, though, depending again on the calculator, it may interpret this as 4 to the power of 2x minus 3, where that minus 3 is still in the exponent. So we've got to be careful with the way we type that in. For, so what I'm trying to say here is for some of you, you'll need to put parentheses around that, 2x. Uh, and if it still has it in the exponent mode, then you've got to push the right button on the calculator, and then you'll push the minus 3. All right. Now for the ti's, you'll have four to the power. Oh, in four to the power of two x minus three. Uh, if you type it in like this, it should give you parentheses there in the beginning, which means you're going to have to put a parentheses where, sorry, where you want it, which is after the two x. So let's look at this. I've got four to the power of two, but this is f of three. So it's 2 times 3, and then we're going to subtract whatever that is by 3. So this would be 4 to the power of 6 minus 3. 
That's a big number. That's after typing it in to the calculator. So it's already subtracted that 3 for us. So 4 to the power of 6 must be 4,096 then. All right, let's do f of 2 then. So that's 4 to the power of 2. But this is times 2 this time. And then minus the 3. So that'd be 4 to the power of 4 minus 3. All right. Now again, this would be an ordered pair. And I guess we can kind of demonstrate this. Like if we wanted f of 0 on this. Now I'm only showing this uh, f of 0 business. So we can see that it grows, like they would say, exponentially. So that'd be 4 to the power of 2 uh, times 0. And then we'll subtract the 3. So 4 to the power of 2 times 0 is 4 to the power of 0 minus 3, which is negative 2. So just by moving x to the right 2, we went from negative 2 to 253. And then we moved it to the right one more, and then it went all the way up to 4,093. So that's exponential growth. It's not growing here or increasing um, at a steady rate. It's increasing more and more each time which we'll want to keep in mind. For the function f of x equals 3 to the power of x minus 5, calculate these functions uh, values. So f of 3 would be 3 to the power of 3. Then we'll minus the 5 right there. So that would be 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Yeah. And then minus 5, 22. All right, then. F of 6 would be 3 to the power of 6 minus 5. And 3 to the power of 6 on my calculator, it says it's 729. Still minus 5, though, which is 724. Graphs of exponential functions, in general, generally we would make a table and choose some values for x and solving for y. Graph those points on a graph. Connect the points. That sounds redundant, but um, the table's nice. And as it turns out, if I remember right on the homework, we only really need two values for this. Uh, and we'll look at an example from the homework as well. Because it's just going to create the line for us. But don't forget, right, on the final, we'll be doing this freehand. So we'll look at it both ways, just so you guys can see, because it's not, if I remember right, it's not clear cut on the homework. Ah, exponential functions, f of x equals b. We use b in this case because it's the base, right? And then to the power of x, that's our exponent. I don't know if b is greater than 1, whatever. It's called an exponential function. If b is greater than 0, we're not worried about that. We're not going to give you any negative basis because that causes all kinds of problems, all right? Uh, b can't be 1 because 1 to the power of anything is 1, which is kind of convenient. So uh, x can be any number, just b has to be positive. That's all we really need to know. The rest of that stuff, the domain and range, um, even the one to oneness, you'll deal with that in 10, 10, all right? But we're not too worried about that stuff here. Uh, so what I do want to look at, though, is the graphs, like uh, this one right here, okay? This graph is for when the base is greater than 1. Now, that kind of sounds weird with what we just talked about. It's positive. Uh, automatically, the nice thing about this is that it's going to go through the point 0, 1, just like we saw with that 3 to the power of x stuff, right? Uh, then it just it increases uh, more and more each time from here on out. So for example, this is 1b, and then this would be 2. But you see how the distance in the y's is getting bigger and bigger and bigger? So that's exponential growth, OK? Now, if the base is less than 1, but greater than 0, because it can't be negative, then we get a uh, graph that looks like this one, OK? Now we notice this line, just like we did in that last one, right here. Uh, if we looked at the last one that we just did right there, uh, this line is getting extremely close to zero the farther to the left we go. But it never actually reaches zero. 
Now we could put it in the calculator and it would tell us it's zero because it doesn't know any better. However, it's never going to get to zero, which is kind of weird. On the other hand, if B is some kind of fractional value, then again, we got that point at zero, one, but as it goes to the right, now it's going to get extremely close to zero. And as we go into the negatives, it's going to increase exponentially this time, okay? The reason that is, is because we're looking at fractional values, right? So that would be uh, one fourth, but now we'd have a negative exponent from these x values here. So like one fourth to the power of negative eight is the same as four to the power of eight, which is humongous, which is why it goes up. The more negative the x values get. So let's look at this one freehand then. f of x equals one half to the power of x. Now, just from what we talked about, right, we will expect this to kind of look something like this. I mean, it should go through that zero, one point, right? We, it should look something like this. So let's look at the graph, though. Um, let's look at a few points on this thing. It, when we're doing this freehand, well, the nice thing about a table is if we need to add more values to it, we will, right? But to start out with, and this is a fractional value, so I'm going to start with actually x is negative 2 on this thing. So that'd be 1 half to the power of negative 2. And you can type it directly into the calculator, or you could just work with it as is. Uh, that negative exponent's going to reciprocate that to make it 2 to the power of 2. In any case, you'll get 4 on that. So we can graph that point, negative 2, 4, which would be right there. Uh, let's go to 0 and just confirm that one. That'd be 1 half to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 0, 1 right there. If you wanted to find negative 1, it would be 2. If you wanted to. Uh, so let's see what the heck is going on when we get x is 1 on this thing. Okay. So that would be 1 half to the power of 1. Let's, let's use the decimal value. Maybe that may help us. That's 0 0.5. So it's uh, 1. It'd be half right there. Let's extend this though and just uh, not really to confirm the pattern because it's already confirmed but I, I'm actually going to use a bigger value on this. Let's use um, 5. Well that would be 1 half to the power of 5. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So that's 1 over 32. I don't know what that decimal is, but it's very small. Uh, now, the only reason I put that on there is because it's important to see that this thing, by the time we get to x is 5, it's already extremely close to 0. And, well, let's graph this then. Now, I, is my line touching 0? It is. That's only because the line is thick. Now, uh, don't worry if yours does on the test, okay? Uh, we don't need to go too picky on that stuff. Let's look at some other points on this one. You, you may have found negative 3, 8, negative 4, 16, and some guys already noticed the pattern on that. But just like we thought it would, it goes up extremely quickly as we go farther to the left. So, I don't know, it's, it's not my worst right there. Now, here's the nice thing is, and I, I don't know if the homework did it. I don't remember seeing it. But if they've changed the, not the scale, but the axis on this, like this one, then we can kind of assume that it, it's going to fit this picture, okay? So on this one with this graph, we still need a table. Eh, maybe that's a little bit too big. We'll put in a few in case we need them. Now, let's start with x is... Actually, I'm going to start with x is 3. Does anyone know why? Now, this is going to give me a 0 exponent on this because I can look at this then as 1 fifth to the power of 3 minus 3, which is 1 fifth to the power of 0, which is 1. So that gives me a point to start with at 3, 1, which would be right here. Okay. Hmm. Well... Let's try x is 0 just to see what the heck happens. So that'd be 1 fifth to the power of 0 minus 3, 
which would be one-fifth to the power of negative three, which is, uh-oh. Uh uh, I can't fit that on the graph, uh, but it does show us the pattern, right? I mean, the points, it's even farther up than the tip of this picture would go. So we need to choose something a little bit closer on this, not zero. Let's try something like, um, I don't know, two. So that would be one-fifth to the power of two minus three, which is one-fifth to the power of negative one, which is five. Oh, that's good. Two, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, right there. Well, you guys choose the value. What do you, what do you want on this thing? Yeah, one's a good one. Uh, if we choose one, we get, I'm going to skip a couple steps, uh, 25. Now, I can't fit 25, but it, again, it kind of confirms the pattern. So let's, let's try to move to the right of that uh, original value we started with at 4. So that would be 1 fifth to the power of 1, which is uh, 1 fifth, 0 0.2. And again, that, it got closer to 0 faster on this one. So when we draw the line for this thing, it's not great, but it's not bad even. This one goes up pretty fast like that. There's our graph.